Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the surface relationships of the thoracic viscera. Okay, so this is the region of the thorax. We have to remember that the dog has 13 ribs. Okay. The best way to count the ribs or to count for the intercostal spaces is by starting with the last rib, which is going to be just there. We also have the sternum with the siphoid process. And cranially, the, this thoracic region is going to be limited by the thoracic limb. Okay. So within the thorax, we're going to have um, the heart and the lungs. Okay. We have to have in mind um, that the diaphragm is going to be attached onto the last rib and the costal arch coming down here. But we have to remember the domed shape of the diaphragm, which is going to come this region here like that. So the heart is going to be in between ribs number three and six. This rib here is going to be rib number five, which is the one that's going to be just caudal to the forelimb. So as we can see, the heart is sort of going to be medially to the forelimb, just there. Okay. The important things to have in mind about the heart are the different valves as we're going to have the pulmonar valve, the aortic, and the mitral valves. Okay, so each of them is going to be in an intercostal space. So if we know which intercostal space we're auscultating, we are going to know which valve we're going to be listening to. So the pulmonar valve is going to be on the intercostal space three, in the third intercostal space. The aortic valve is going to be in the fourth intercostal space and the mitral valve in the fifth intercostal space. If we want to auscultate these valves, we have to place our stethoscope at the level of the costochondral junction, which is around that area. On the left-hand side, we're going to be able to listen to these valves, but on the right-hand side, we will, we will also be able to listen to the tricuspid valve. The rest of the thorax is going to be for the lungs. Okay, so we're going to have the auscultating triangle, which is this region here, where we are going to be able to auscultate the lungs properly. We have to have in mind that the lungs do not go as far back as the diaphragm and the size of the lungs depends on the expiration and expiration processes of respiration. So as we have mentioned before, the attachments of the diaphragm, the diaphragm is going to be attached to the last rib and the costal arch and we have also talked about the doomed, the dome shape of the diaphragm, just like that. We have to consider the dome shape of the diaphragm coming in this direction. And we also have to consider the line of pleural reflection. The line of pleural reflection is where the pleura turns round and reflects on itself. And it creates a space in between the line of pleural reflection, which is just cranial to the attachments of the diaphragm. So it's just going to be there. And this space is the space available for the lungs to expand.